Five girls from Lincoln Middle School in Clarksburg, West Virginia, stepped up in a shot put contest to the circle for their turn. Now, they knew that a biological boy who identified as a girl was competing against them for a different school. The girls then refused to throw in the event, which was eventually won by the biological male athlete known as Becky Pepper Jackson. This prompting the West Virginia Attorney General to file a lawsuit against the Harrison County uh, Board of Education on the female student's behalf. It's coming after a federal appeals court ruled the state's transgender sports ban discriminates against Pepper Jackson under Title IX. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So I have an update about the story concerning the five young middle school girls who protested competing against a trans athlete. And this is quite a disturbing development, but unfortunately it's not surprising because this is going to happen when you allow male athletes to be in the locker room with girls. Obviously it's common sense to give girls their own bathrooms, their own locker rooms for their own protection, for their own privacy. But for some reason, when a boy identifies as a girl, that protection is taken away. So the state of West Virginia bans transgender athletes from competing in women's categories. But an appeals court decided to override the state's own policy and allow this person to compete, to compete in a competition for girls, simply because this person began transitioning at a very young age, apparently from third grade. And I'm assuming this person has been put on hormones and puberty blockers in recent years, which I say is absolutely tragic. No adult should be encouraging this or co-signing this. But of course, there are plenty of adults involved in this story who are all for it. So this person has been, you know, put forward as the poster child for trans activism. This person was discriminated against, banned from competing in sports. No, you just need to be in the correct category. This person received help from a law firm, you know, legal activists who want to push this agenda and even received an award. It's overwhelming. It's humbling um, to be recognized in this space. Um, you know, I came out in 85. And we went straight to the front lines to fight for our lives. And now we're fighting for our lives again. So Becky Pepper Jackson received a Liberty Award from Lambda Legal. Also in attendance was Becky Pepper Jackson, a 13-year-old transgender girl, a member of her middle school's track and field team for the past three seasons, who spoke about her fight against the state of West Virginia's anti-trans sports ban. Lambda Legal and their partners, the American Civil Liberties Union and the ACLU of West Virginia won an injunction blocking the state's law. Determined to kick Becky off her team, the state appealed to the US Supreme Court to lift the stay and lost. So this was last year and we now know that the state of West Virginia are continuing with their legal action and the young girls as well, they won an injunction that you know ensures that they're not going to be prevented from competing in future competitions. Not only did they have to compete with a trans athlete, even though their state bans it, they were punished and they were pushed out of their own sports. They were excluded and banned. But of course, ACLU of West Virginia couldn't care less about that. It's all about the male, about the male individual who wants to be in a women's category. We were shocked and also we were disappointed that it had been passed that he was allowed to participate with us. Then came the protest. We got in the circle. Some, I personally got in the circle, turned around and walked out past the white line to scratch. Some girls went in, acted like they were going to throw and then just walked out before they threw. There was one girl that actually did throw just to get one mark in and then she scratched her wrist. As a result, her coach suspended the students who protested from their upcoming meet scheduled for this Saturday. So you've seen right there an example of one of those brave young girls who came out and spoke up about what they've been through and why they felt it was important to make a stand against this. Why they felt it was important to protest having to compete against a trans athlete. And she came on camera. She came on camera and told her story. So again, I commend these young ladies 
And this is what they've had to go through. These are the allegations that have been made recently about this trans athlete. A high school track athlete in Bridgeport, West Virginia, has joined an ongoing lawsuit challenging the inclusion of trans-identified males in female sports. The student, Adelaia Cross, identified in the declaration as AC, alleges that fellow track team member Becky Pepper Jackson, a boy who claims to identify as a girl, made several sexually abusive and vulgar remarks about her, which caused her deep distress. According to a statement by the 15-year-old girl, added as evidence to the lawsuit, State of Tennessee versus Cardona on May 8, Pepper Jackson, 13 years old and identified as BPJ, made several offensive and inappropriate sexual comments towards Cross. The harassment escalated, she said, during their final year of middle school, when the comments became much more aggressive, vile and disturbing. So this is a young lady who has since left middle school and has gone on to high school. And she's saying that she is speaking out on behalf of the young girls who are still dealing with this. She was able to at least, you know, leave middle school and get away from this person, get away from this situation. She's speaking out on behalf of the young girls who are still in the thick of it. And obviously what she alleges to have been through should never have happened and needs to be addressed. There needs to be accountability. The suit alleges that Pepper Jackson would say, suck my d- to both the complainant and the other girls on the team. During the end of that year, about two to three times per week, B, PJ would look at me and say, suck my d-. There were usually other girls around who heard this. I heard B, PJ say the same thing to other teammates too, Cross said. B, PJ made other more explicit sexual statements that felt threatening to me. I'm going to stick my into your and BPJ sometimes added and in your ass as well. These comments were disturbing and caused me deep distress. This is what they have to go through to play sports. This is what happens when you take away their protection. This has happened multiple times. There were allegations about the basketball player who injured three girls, and this person was suspended, but yet is allowed to play on a girls' basketball team and is allowed in their locker rooms. The sexual abuse took place while Pepper Jackson shared a locker room with the teen girls, as well as during track practice, Cross said. The comments made the girls feel confused and disgusted, she explained, especially confusing because I was told that BPJ was on the girls' team because BPJ identifies as a girl. But the girls on the team never talked like that. And it's the message that you're giving these young girls. You're telling them to ignore their instincts. You're telling them to throw all caution out the window simply because this person identifies as a girl. That's why these young ladies are saying, I was told this person identifies as a girl. Basically, I was told that this person is a girl. Get undressed in front of them, right? Because we're all the same. That's the lie you're telling children. And it's very, very dangerous. It's a very dangerous game that you've dragged these kids into. But I commend Adelaia for speaking out. It takes a lot of bravery to come out and testify and speak about this sort of experience. This is what's going to help these young girls who are still dealing with this. She's still dealing with the aftermath of being put in this position by adults who should know better. Concerned Cross reported the sexual comments to her track coach and to school administrators. However, nothing changed, she said. And Pepper Jackson got very little or no punishment for saying things other students would be penalised for. I was glad to move into high school in the fall of 2023 so that I would not have to deal with BPJ's harassment since BPJ is still in middle school, but because the middle school and high school share the same track and have overlapping practice times, I still see BPJ up to three times per week at girls discus and shot put practice. She also described her fears for future school activities that may include Pepper Jackson. 
according to her statement, both Pepper Jackson and Cross play trumpet in the marching band. In marching band, we have many band trips that require overnight stays, where students share hotel rooms without an adult staying in the room with them. I am hesitant to continue playing in the band because I am uncertain whether I will be forced to share a hotel room or be exposed to BPJ on these trips. And this is what happened with the basketball player who had been suspended from a girls rowing team who was allowed to basically travel on the road with them because obviously he's part of the team. And on every trip, a young girl had to quote unquote, take one for the team and share a hotel room with him. And this is somebody who was suspended for leering at women's breasts. You take someone like that and you force these young girls to share a hotel room with him. So this young lady has every right to have that concern because it does happen. She also spoke out about her concern for the young girls who were on the same team as this person, currently have to share a locker room with this person, because this person is a woman, right? And she said that she fears that this is going to exclude the girls. They will self-exclude. Nobody wants to deal with this. Women do not accept your terms. You woke sporting bodies. You woke appeal courts that are now saying, if you want to participate in sports, you're going to have to share a locker room with a male athlete. You're going to have to be willing to compete with a male athlete. You're going to have to be willing to have your safety jeopardized. You're more likely to get injured competed against a male athlete than with other females. You're going to have to be okay with that. Or we're going to call you a bigot. And we're going to ban you from future competitions. Okay? Do you accept those terms, girls, women? The answer is no. We do not accept those terms. We do not consent to being in a locker room with boys, with men. We don't accept that. You are forcing young women into a situation that they do not consent to. That is abuse. I also worry about the little sixth grade girls who are on the same team as BPJ right now. If I were in sixth grade and had to deal with sexual comments from a biological male two years older than me, who was changing in the same locker room as me, I wouldn't even play sports. It wouldn't be worth it. This is the reality that young women and girls are facing as a result of these insane policies. They're the ones who are deciding that it's not worth it. They are the ones who are walking away. Yet yeah, these people claim they care about inclusion. You shouldn't ban people from sports and deny them the benefits of competing in sports while it's happening to girls and you don't care. She also said she fears for her younger sister. My younger sister is a good athlete, but she is very shy and I can't imagine how she would feel if BPJ said those sexual comments to her while they were competing in sports or changing in the locker room. I do not want that to happen. I believe that girls' sports should be for girls only. Males, even those who identify as girls, do not belong on girls' sports teams or in girls' locker rooms. Absolutely. And this young lady who testified, she spoke about the other aspect of having your position stolen from you by a male athlete who shouldn't be in your category. She was in the top three on her team during seventh and eighth grade, but that all began to change when the male athlete came on the scene and started competing as a girl. Did she become less of an athlete? No. Her ranking simply went down because males were allowed to start competing in the women's category. Allegedly, this person said to her, you have more testosterone than I do and I'm still beating you. And where have we seen that before? We've seen it with young athletes now. And we've also seen it with athletes over the age of 40. Male athletes mocking the women for not having a good bench press. Because BPJ, now ranked in the top three in shot put and discus, I was pushed out of the top three to fourth place at BMS in those events. And it meant I did not get to compete in shot put or discus in the Mid-Mountain 10 MS Championships on April 29, 2023. And she was out for the rest of the season. Classic example of young girls being excluded 
right there. But apparently activists think it's okay for young girls to be pushed out of championships, to be pushed out of advancing further within competitions by male athletes. They think that's perfectly fine. Maybe the young girls just need to work harder. Maybe they just need to accept failure and not not take it out on the trans athlete. These are all the responses that I've heard. And of course, she was uncomfortable sharing a locker room with BPJ, but she was scared to speak out because she didn't want to be labelled transphobic. Apparently, being transphobic means that you care about women, means that you believe that women should have their own spaces, should have their own sports, free of males. Apparently, that's, that's being transphobic. Being transphobic means that you care about the safety of women and believe that they should have their own locker rooms, their own bathrooms. These labels are losing their meaning fast. Adelaide Cross, she actually wrote an op-ed for Fox News explaining her experience competing against this trans athlete. So I encourage you to, to look that up. I'll leave the link below. A very well written piece where she describes her experience. And it's a harrowing experience that no young girl should be put through just because she wants to, to play sports. <laughs> BPJ rubbed it in my face, made me feel inferior and trash talked me, but not throwing as far. In short, BPJ belittled me. So this is what, in 2024, people think is acceptable for young girls to be put through, all in the name of gender ideology, all in the name of inclusion, which doesn't even sound like a good word anymore. Inclusion doesn't mean that you throw away protections for girls and women. Inclusion should not mean that a person can be in a category that they don't belong in. And anybody who thinks this is okay, you certainly shouldn't be in charge of making decisions that affect children. So let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Take care of yourselves. Like and subscribe. And God willing, I will see you in the next video.